take your mind and put it away from you and look at your life. Look at the way you do things and say, if I was a guy, would I want to be associated with this kind of a woman? Just at a presentation level. How do you speak? How do you articulate? How do you present yourself in public? How do you dress? Um, just, you know, anything that has to do with presentation at all. Um, hi guys, my name is Donald Roy and I'm excited to be here today. I've been given an assignment to tackle the question, how do Christian guys pick a life partner? And the idea behind answering that question is to be able to interpret why guys do then end up acting in a certain way when things don't work out. Um, I'm told uh, girls do not get insecure about why did he leave me? Was it anything to do with what I was doing? Or, you know, the, you know, ladies get insecure and start to ask several questions about why did this happen? Why did it happen like that? So we decided to tackle it from the very onset. How do guys choose? Could the way they choose a life partner have an impact or significance to the way they eventually act when challenges do break out? And so I hope I can tackle this question easily and in a way that everyone can grasp and understand. All right. So first and foremost, we have to understand that church guys are not angels. They're not Nephilims. They are guys from planet Earth. <laughs> and so just like any other guy, they also look at there is a certain level of, there is a certain way of presentation that they look at. Even if you go back to the Bible, you will realize that every man who ever picked a wife, with the exception of Adam, of course, Every man who ever picked a wife had to look at a certain standard before they considered that person a wife. I'll give an example. Isaac goes to look for Isaac. In fact, Abraham sends his servant to look for Isaac's wife, Rebecca. The servant of Abraham gets to uh, Rebecca's place and then says, whoever gives uh, my camels water is the wife that I'm going to pick for my master. What do you get there? Whoever presents herself in a certain way becomes the person that I'm picking for wife. Guy number two, Bo has. Wealthy guy, um, successful in his dealings during his time. And then there is Ruth who is um, a widow. Ruth has had to act in a certain way that Every other woman who was in Boaz's field was not acting in order to be able to attract Boaz's attention and Boaz's, to capture Boaz's passion and mind for marriage. Queen Esther, upon her rep replacement, excuse me, her replacement of Queen Vashti, she had to be prepped. The Bible talks about how Esther's preparation was so intense that she had to keep, you know, she had to learn how to apply spices. Some of you might have to learn how do you apply eyeshadow? How do I apply makeup and foundation in a way that makes me the best in the land or in a way that makes best in the sight of any guy? And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying makeup is what will get you a guy, but I'm just saying as a lady, you want to sit before you can consider and you can think about men. You want to sit and look at yourself and say, you know, put your, take your mind and put it away from you and look at your life. Look at the way you do things and say, if I was a guy, would I want to be associated with this kind of a woman? Just at a presentation level. How do you speak? How do you articulate? How do you present yourself in public? How do you dress? Um, just, you know, anything that has to do with presentation at all. If you act all high class and uh, condescending and uh, what other thing does do the girls do? You know, you act all high profile. Um, you have to then ask yourself, what kind of men am I going to attract? Right? So you have to know that Yes, we are talking about how guys choose, but you have to understand that guys choose based on presentation. And the kind of presentation that you give will determine the kind of guys that you're going to attract. That's a point that you have to get. The first point that you have to get is every guy, no matter how spiritual they are, they only consider someone in their radar based on how they present themselves. All right? 
if a guy loves a girl who is very prayerful, if you prove yourself to be like a prayerful woman, even though maybe you may be faking or lying about it, if you show yourself to be super spiritual, then the super spiritual guys will love super spiritual women are the ones you always attract. So you should not then go around saying, why is it I just attract eh, the prayer warriors? Because that's who you are. You know, that's that's who you're presenting. Or you be complaining, why, do I, why is it I only attract guys from the club? Why is it I'm only asked out by guys? Because that's what you, that's the, that's the presentation you are giving. That's, that's, that's what you are giving to the guys. And those are the guys that will come to you. So, excuse me again. You have to work on your presentation. That's the first thing. So guys, select or pick someone to be on their radar. That's just based on presentation. What you weigh, how you eat, how you talk, what you talk about, where you go. All those things. You want to, from time to time, look at what kind of person am I? What kind of picture? What kind of image am I selling? What kind of value proposition am I giving? That will determine the guys that come into your life. Number two. Is guys, we then look at um, Christian guys, that is. Christian guys. Let's remember we're talking about Christian guys. And while not all of us will do that, um, the ones that are spiritual, like the spiritual in true essence, will then consider a woman who is truly spiritual. Okay? So let me unpack truly spiritual. A woman who is truly spiritual is one who has got the ability to understand spiritual principles and principles of the truth and balance them. Again, let me unpack that before I confuse and lose some. There are girls who are super spiritual that they will spiritualize everything. Pray. Anything happens, they'll tell you. It's because I didn't pray. Or, uh, you know, they'll tell you, I'm not doing this because, you know, I have to pray. Like, I don't know if, I know that as a girl, you probably are like that or you've seen a girl who is at least like that. And then there are some girls who know the word in and out. They'll tell you, well, the word of God says I can do this. You know, so I, the word of God said never, never said I can't go to a club. It's what I do when I'm in a club. That's bad. The girls will know their way around scripture. The, you know, the, uh, how they navigate around scripture. They understand, they interpret scripture. Then the girls will know prayer. They know tongues. They know Gomo. Um, uh, 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 mountain, for those of you who don't know Shona. They know their knees. They pray. So, whilst they are those two extremes, most spiritually sane guys by spiritually sane i'm talking about the guys that can also balance their spirituality who then want a girl who's not on neither extreme they don't want a girl who uses the convenient bible truth to their advantage or the the girl who's so spiritual that the guy can't even you know that she's no longer earthly relevant so it becomes important that once a guy has considered you and you're now on their radar you need to be uh, uh, honest about who you are spiritually. Let me just say it like that. Honest about who you are spiritually. Being honest about who you are spiritually now will help you to attract the kind of guy that matches your personality. So if you know, if you know you want to attract super spiritual bishop kind of a guy, then you have to measure up to their standard as well. All right? Measure up to their standard. Be prayerful also. You know, of course, some other guys that are not spiritual will come and ask you out. I'm not saying it then exonerates you from being asked out by guys, guys who are not as spiritual. But measure up to that standard. If, if you know, if you know for a fact, I don't want a guy who's spiritual like that. I want a guy who's spiritual like this. Then act it out like that. Because as guys, after having seen someone... You like the girl, you like the way she talks, you like the way she dresses, you like what she's wearing every Sunday, you get to the stage of then talking to you. Now question, let me talk to you, let me have a conversation with this girl. We're living in the age of social media. I hit you in the inbox. Hey, how are you? And then if you are sister, fire, 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 then give me scripture, right? Okay, now I'm being extreme. But <laughs> if you know you want to be super spiritual sister, fire, at that point, 
begin to establish a standard of I am spiritual to this level. If the guy doesn't want to match up to that level, they will know. But make the mistake of faking it and pretending like you're enjoying conversation and blah, 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 blah. You make the mistake, you allow the guy, you start dating, you will have problems in future. And some guys are, is guys, okay, about us guys, not many guys have got the guts to just tell you, you know, I can't continue to date you because I don't think you're spiritual enough. Or I can't continue to date you because you're over spiritual. Or I can't continue to date you because of blah, blah, blah. Not, not many guys can do that. Not many guys can open up about why they eventually break up with you. There are a lot of girls who have been cheated by guys. But the reason why guys eventually cheat, both the guys that are in church and the guys that are, that are out of church, is because there's a part of your character that they are not liking. There's a part of your character that they are not proud to be associated with. So if some other girl comes who's got that element in her character, it's easy for them to give traction to that girl and one thing will lead to the other. I'm not trying to justify or condone cheating. I'm just trying to explain it and put it across as it is. So, stage number one, learn presentation. Know how to present yourself. Work hard at presentation. Work hard at presentation. Present yourself at the level of expectation that you have. If you want a guy who knows how to dress, you have to know how to dress yourself because, you know, you can't attract a guy who knows how to dress if you don't dress properly. Um, much as, of course, there are some very kind of guys that will still come and pick you up even they don't, even though you don't match their standard of, of, of presentation, they'll come and pick you up just because you look attractive. So, know how to dress. And then secondly, just be honest about who you are spiritually. Just be honest. Be honest about not who you aspire to be, but who you are now. Because who you are now is what determines uh, the stability of that relationship. The sustainability of where we are going. You are less likely to run into problems if you are honest from the very onset with a guy. I don't like one, two, three. You are better off a guy just leaving you than a guy staying because you lie to them. Because you are afraid they are going to leave you just in the same way that five, ten other guys did. You start to compromise on your values. Uh, or may not necessarily compromise. You start to lie about your values so that you attract that guy to stay. Never, never do that, ladies. So I just had two things to explain to you today. I hope I didn't, did not uh, lose you in my uh, trying to explain. I'm always told that I am, I go around in circles and I'm not articulate. I'm still trying to work on that. But I hope I did not lose you in these uh, 10 or so minutes that I've spoken to you. So just to conclude, learn how to present yourself. Ruth had to learn it. Esther had to be, to be prepared. Rebecca did not necessarily have to learn, but she had, she was taught the manners from her household. And it was those manners that got her a man. So at whatever level of expectation you have, prepare accordingly. Then secondly, be honest about your spirituality. If you are dating and attracting guys that are from the club, that are from beers, that are from drugs, then probably you want to cross-check your personality and your, your, your level of spirituality that you are giving out. You want to examine yourself and make sure you get everything right. So thank you very much, ladies, for listening to this uh, video and uh, this um, episode of The Gospel Catcher. Please do continue to support this YouTube channel by subscribing and hitting the notifications bell so that you get notifications whenever there's a new video. And please remember to also leave and drop your comment and just let us know what you think about what we're talking about and God will do you good and will continue to richly bless you. Thank you.